Hi, my name's Gordon. I'm one of the owners of Snowy. And we wanted to show you a new thing that we're doing with our kiosk. In the past, the tops used to go up and down by pulling a pin on each side. And then there'd be this, these gas shocks that would actually make this kind of buoyant, which means it would take two of us, one on each end, to, to lift it up to the point where we could repin it and would stay in the up position. And when we wanted to pull the top down, you'd pull the pins and it would take two people again to pull the top down. It's not an easy thing and it did take some muscle. So we've, we kind of, uh, well, we've reinvented it. We've made it so now the top goes up and down remote control with, with the remote control. And now I wanted to show you that today because there's a little bit of a learning curve, but it, it does make life way more easy for a single person setting up an event. They can do it all by themselves, which is what it's all about. Um, one man show if you need be. So let's, let's come back here and we'll plug this in and we'll start showing you how it works. When, uh, um, when, I, when we use this system, this cord always goes into this top left corner of this outlet box. No matter what, it always is going to live there. We unplug it and plug it in every time we raise and lower this. So I'm going to plug in my main power source. Now, uh, usually at the end of every event, I've unplugged this so it's ready to go. The reason we unplug it is because this remote control has to pair with uh, a circuit board that's in here and we'll talk more about that later. So I'm going to plug this in. This also runs a fan. There, it, it, it's powered by 110 volt that goes through a converter which reduces it to 12 volt. And this converter box has this fan and if I don't unplug it, it'll run nonstop for the whole event and there's no purpose in wearing that fan out. Especially when this remote, and I can't remember if I already said it, but after I, after I raise this up and this remote sits for a couple minutes, it times out, which means it is no longer syncing with that circuit board. And the reason for that is it's a safety. So if, if a child were to get a hold of it, they could start lowering it up and down and blah, blah, blah. If you weren't around, you couldn't stop them. They might get hurt. So this just times out. Okay, at this point, I plugged it in. I'm going to pair it. I press both center buttons, and you see a green light. I hold it for about 10 seconds and let go. Now it's ready to go up. If you notice, I'm only pushing one button. This does have the ability to raise one side at a time, but and uh, we discourage people from pushing them both. <coughs> Excuse me. Because you might think you have them both pushed, but really you might only have one, which means the top is going up one side only and it, it'll start to get real crooked and you'll hurt it. So we always raise and lower up by one button. <clears throat> You're going to see a, a section that's going to expose another piece of metal that uh, this is going to slip over the white pipe and you'll see a piece of metal. I like to, once I see that, I like to stop. And this gives me the ability to check if, if one side has gone up faster than the other. So I've left it about a half inch. Now I can compare the left and right side. I do know that this side has, is a little bit lower. So now, if I'm standing back here with the remote, this button runs, this button runs that actuator. So I'm going to raise it up just a little bit, have it catch up to the left side. That looks really nice. Now I'm going to continue to go up. I'll do the same thing when I bring it in the down position. I'll bring it to that point, and then I stop and I compare if I'm bringing it down level or if I'm bringing it down crooked, meaning the right side's higher than the left side. I can correct it and make them balanced. 
One nice thing about the remote control is it gives me the ability to walk away from it, make sure um, I'm not lifting it into a tree, um, or when I'm bringing it down, I'm not, I'm not bringing it down on someone or a little kid. I can stand out here and keep an eye on things. <clears throat> so, I, you, you can take this quite high. I usually stop just a couple inches over my head. Um, one thing about it is this uh, will bottom out. It will stop itself once it reaches a certain height. If I continue to try to make it go higher, I'll blow these fuses, and we're going to talk about that next. So underneath, so you got this counter, then there's a lower counter, and, and mounted on the underside of that lower counter is this circuit board. This is the board that's running both actuators, and it's also receiving the information from the remote control. If you notice, there's five fuses. We only use two out of the five. So just, just as reference, you're going to see a red and a black wire run across that lower counter over to an actuator. So Aaron, it's going to like run across underneath to a motor that powers this one. There's going to be another red and black wire that powers that one. So that gives you the ability to know if, if this side's not going up, it's probably this fuse. Now, because we only use two, it means I've got three spares that I can choose to use if need be. Um, there is a cover that goes over it. You just pull it off when you need to get into it. I got the worst tickle. But I need wings, man. Okay, so we've kind of covered the, the circuit board and the fuses and where they're located. These do just pull on and off, just like a car. Um, they're a 30 amp fuse. Okay, so now, I forgot, I forgot. Once I have this raised up all the way, I forgot to unplug it. Like I said, we wanna unplug it because no matter what, this is gonna time out anyways in two minutes, but it is running this, which means when my, the event's over, I still have to unplug it and plug it back in to reset everything. But really, it's running this fan indefinitely. As, lo as long as it's plugged in, that fan's running. So now we're ready to lower it. So I'm going to come back and find my cord that's dangling. There is other things that you will leave plugged in. This switch runs your water pump, which is a cord that plugs in right below it. And then this... Um, outlet runs your hot water heater which is this big heavy cord and then the only spot left is for your actuators so we're gonna plug it back in I'm going to um, sync this with the circuit board by holding it I see my green light I'm gonna hold it for a few seconds if by chance it doesn't sync just turn around and hold those buttons down for another 10 seconds or you can go through the whole cycle and unplug it again, plug it back in until it sinks. So I'm gonna let go of it. I, I know it's ready to go. I kind of hear the, the motors go which tells me it's ready to bring it down. So I mentioned before, I'm gonna lower this to about a half inch away from both sides just to see if one motor's faster than the other and the top starts to do this. I can run just the left actuator, left on my side, and bring it back to level. And I'm only going to use one button. Like I said before, if I use them both, I might think I have them both pushed, but one might not be being pushed, which means only one actuator is working. So I'm going to run them both with one button. Again, it's kind of nice. I can walk around. I can make sure there's no fingers in here or little people climbing. Um, it, it, is, it is fairly slow. At first I thought it was too slow, but in some ways I'm like, it's just right. Uh, I can keep an eye on things. I have control when it reaches the spot to hurry and let go of the switch or the remote so I don't blow a fuse. It, it, gives you, it just gives you time to do things that you need to be aware of. So we are getting close. 
um, to, to check our gap from one side to the other. It looks really good. Um, we'll get it closer. And if we need to bring one side down further, I, I have that ability to, to do one side. So I'm about a quarter inch up and it's, st and it's the same. Looks great. So now I'm, now I'm like, okay, I'm ready to continue all the way down. This, this will stop about a half inch above the sneeze guard as well as the back door. Once I get close, I'm going to start to pay attention to um, a noise of the actuators. I'm going to hear those motors lug down as it pulls and wants to stop. At that point, that's my clue to let go of this button. If I were to sit here and hold it, it's going to blow those fuses and, uh, and then you're going to have to climb under there and replace fuses. So when you hear it do that, that's your moment to be like, let go. If you notice this has Velcro, um, this Velcro is in the ceiling so we don't lose it. Located by this power box where it can't get wet and it's safely secured. Um, and then I think Aaron wants to show you where this fuse box is located on the inside. He'll take a picture underneath that lower counter and uh, show you its location. Um, I hope I've covered everything that, that you might um, have to troubleshoot. But uh, of course, everyone here at Snowy's um, anxious to help and answer your questions and I hope this was an informative video for you and valuable for your time and and we uh, appreciate you watching it thank you very much